Hello, welcome to Mr C's Biology. Today we're going to be doing a required practical and working out what the population size is of a common species in a habitat. So for this uh, practical, we're thinking about common species. I thought for this example, we could maybe use uh, dandelions and we're going to need some equipment for this practical. So this is a badly drawn quadrat. Now a quadrat is what we're going to be placing on the floor to see what's in a certain area. We will also need a calculator, a tape measure, and you might also want an identification sheet that tells you about different sorts of plants so that when you're looking for a certain type of plant, you know that it's definitely one because it tells you the type of leaves that it might have and, and shape or colour of a flower. Now, in terms of a method, there are two main methods. We're going to start off by talking about the random sampling, and then we'll talk about sampling a longer transect. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find two areas that we want to sample. We want to compare because we want to work out is this population size affected by a factor? We want to ask a scientific question. So for example, are these dandelions affected by the use of the land? So in our first area over here, we might have a playing field, obviously used for different things, to something like a wildflower meadow. We're then going to set up a tape measure to get the sense of the area. So we'll have one tape measure running from a central point up here, maybe for 10 metres long, and one tape measure maybe for 20 metres in the other direction. This for us is going to form a grid, a bit like a graph where we're going to place our quadrat randomly. Now, we now need to find some random numbers using our calculator. We're going to need to find uh, this button down the bottom here, the, either the RND or the RAN hash. And you'll see that if you press shift and then that button, it will give you a random number. Different calculators work differently. It might give you a random number every time you press equals between zero and one. But you're probably want, going to want to make this number a bit bigger so that we can make it work for our experiment. Once we've got these random numbers that maybe are between naught and 10 and between naught and 20, then we're going to start plotting them on our grid. So we need to find two random numbers to get a coordinate. The first random number uh, might be two and the second random number might be 13. And so we'd place a little dot on our grid and that is where on the playing field we're going to place our first quadrat. We then might come up with another couple of random numbers and we might find that we'll end up getting a random spread of numbers. And each one of these we're going to go to it and we're going to place our quadrat. We're going to do the same for the wildflower meadow. We're going to work out an area that can be the same size, it can be a different size. Let's assume it's the same size for now and we're going to come up with some more random coordinates using the random number generator on our calculator. And at each one, we're going to place our quadrat and carry out our experiment. And what are we going to do at each of these points? Well, we're going to put our quadrat on the ground and we're going to see how many dandelions, that's our common species in this example, are inside the quadrat. So for example, if this, if this quadrat up here was our one that we're going to use in uh, this one here. We might look down at it and we might see lots of grass because uh, the playing field is mainly grass. And we might see in one corner that we have a dandelion. Great. Now uh, we might see another one over here. And so we might have two dandelions in our quadrat. That's great, we've got two. We're then gonna do that for every single coordinate on our playing field. Place our quadrat down see how many dandelions there are inside it and make a record of it in a table. Once we've done that for both the playing field and the wildflower meadow, we can then get a mean for each one. To find out what a mean is and how to calculate it, there's another video in the science skills section that you can watch. But we'll get a mean number of dandelion in the playing field and we'll also get the same for the wildflower meadow. The important thing now is that we can compare these two means and see which one has more dandelions in it 
and see if that matches up to what we'd expect. And so there we randomly sampled two areas and compared the population size of a common species in each of those habitats. So that's an overview of the first half of the practical. Any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll see you for the second half.